Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tamika, this is Library of Tomes, where I talk to you about all the bookish things going on in my life. Uh, so today's video, because I cannot stop complaining about this book to my friends, I'm gonna now complain to you. So today I'm going to be reviewing Credence by Penelope Douglas. I gave this book one star. I hated this book a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. So, with that being said, I need to go ahead and preface this by saying I read a lot of taboo books. I am completely cool with taboo. I am into that. I am actively seeking that out. This book was just not good. So, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it here. If you want to read Credence, I would leave. I would leave this video because I will be spoiling it in its entirety because I have to spoil everything in order to specifically express why I hated this book so much and why this has already made my worst of the books of 2021 list. So with that being said, I would leave if you don't want to be spoiled, but if you want to hear why I hated Credence and why I ended up giving it a one star, then feel free to continue watching. It's gonna get heated. So just another disclaimer, if you liked Credence, that's cool. That is your opinion. That is your own writing system, your own like enjoyment of the book. I don't care. It's none of my business. What I'm here to tell you is why I didn't like it. Um, maybe if you didn't like some of these things, you'll feel kind of seen because I felt a lot of people have a very positive outlook on Credence. They are very excited when they talk about it. They enjoyed it a lot and I absolutely did not have that experience and I'm gonna go into why now. So let's start with the positives because I have very few positive things to say. First of all, I wanna say, I really enjoy Penelope Douglas's writing. It is very readable. It is very quick and very easy to read through. I was definitely invested in the beginning. I'm not gonna sit here and say I wasn't. I was very invested in the beginning of the story. I was very invested in our heroine and I was very invested in the relationship that we were going to get because of the taboo situation we were getting put into. I was very intrigued to see how it was gonna work out, how things were gonna play and what was gonna happen. And that is the extent of my positive feelings toward this book. First of all, can we please talk about the fucking trauma in this book? Can we please talk about the fact that our heroine is going through so much trauma that is absolutely unnecessary and not needed to portray a quality story, in my opinion? Um, first of all, I would like to note that the amount of trauma in here is why I believe a lot of people think this book is so dark. Other than that, and maybe one or two other small things, this book is not dark. This book is taboo, it is not dark. This book is trauma filled for the sake of trauma, in my opinion. I really, really felt like Penelope Douglas said, yes, let us, let's just make our hero and our heroine both have horrible trauma and have that be, you know, the main source of like all of the issues and all of the, all the troubles and, and everything. I would first of all like to say that I don't understand why our heroine had to lose both of her parents through suicide. Like her parents both commit suicide. I don't understand why that was a choice we made. I don't know why we couldn't have had any other way to orphan this poor girl. But then like to make it worse, you make her parents just hate her for no reason and like not even speak to her. That was just a choice I felt like Penelope Douglas made that just was trauma for the sake of trauma. Uh, and I felt like this was the entire line of the of the trauma in here i thought all of it was just trauma for the sake of trauma our hero who we will get into in a second but if you have read the book you know who we end up getting we end up having caleb be our hero he was left in a car by his uh, i'm gonna say neglectful abusive parent because if you leave your child in a car while you're off on a bender for four days you are a neglective abusive person and when i tell you that both of the, the boys in the story, Caleb and whatever the fuck the other dude's name is, I can't remember, he was the one she probably should have ended up with, the other dude, they both, Noah, was that his name? I don't know. They both had this unnecessary trauma built into her trauma. So I highlighted this line and it said, 
I wish she was dead. Noah stares at the floor and then looks up at me. I wish she was dead because then I could love her. And he is specifically talking about his mother who is in prison, who only calls to get money for a uh, commissary, or at least that is when he feels like he's useful to her. And it just felt so unnecessary to my both sets of these characters have this horrible trauma. I know some people probably are like, she was like reflecting and making it like a mirror. So they like really understood each other. And I'm just like, mm, don't agree. I think she was just filling the book with trauma so she could get the dark romance label, honestly. The other thing that I'd like to quite literally quickly mention is the fact that our hero, Caleb, sexually assaults Tyrannin on multiple occasions. This was the only other dark part of the story. He sexually assaults her when he comes in after being in the woods and she has to force him off of her. And then the second time she doesn't force him off her, but she's actively telling him no to stop. And he just has sex with her anyway. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. Are we sexually assaulting our heroine by our hero who I'm supposed to be rooting for? Is that what we're doing? Are we just, that's what we're doing today? Are we just gonna assault our main character? Is that what's gonna happen? Cool, great, love this. Already rooting for this couple. So let me just be clear. I was, I was hooked, okay? I was sold on the premise of her sleeping with all three of them and potentially ending up with all three of them or ending up with one of them, whatever. I was very sold on that premise. So she has sex with the dad. She has sex with Noah and the brother, Caleb, and she starts having sex with one of them, and then she starts having sex with the other two, and then Caleb randomly gets attached to her for some reason, and he's in love with her, and he runs off into the woods, and then for some reason, then we're just supposed to believe that Tiernan is in love with him when they've had like three interactions with one another, and all of the interactions between them have them be hating each other. Like it literally went from, I hate you, I am going to sexually assault you. I'm going to be mean to you. I'm going to throw stuff at you. I'm going to bully you. I'm going to make your life a living hell while you're living here. To I'm pissed because you're having sex with my dad and my brother and me, uh, but I won't speak to you because I can't speak because of this trauma that I had when I was a child. Uh, but I'm not gonna explain that to you. I'm not gonna make any way to tell you or communicate with you how I feel or the fact that, you know, I'm having these emotions for you. I'm just gonna say that you're a whore and that I hate you, uh, even though I love you because I'm not communicating that I'm in love with you. Uh, and you're just supposed to know that already. And you're supposed to like fawn at my feet. And I was just like, sir, do you, what are we doing? Like literally what are we doing? I'm so confused. So like, there's no communication between them. No buildup, nothing. Um, and she just decides to stop doing anything with either of the other two and like be really sad because Caleb's lost in the woods. What the fuck do you mean? Why do we care he's in the woods? Why do we care? Th nothing is happening here. Like there's no reason for us to care about this relationship, about these characters, about them having a, having a disagreement because there is no relationship to hold on to. There is no relationship between them. It is straight up just nothing, nothing. And let's jump back really quick to the fact that when she has sex with uh, Noah and Caleb for the first time, it's a threesome. Uh, she's having sex with Noah and Caleb comes behind her to go from the back entrance, right? I don't remember much lubrication used and she was loving it. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm wrong but I'm pretty sure that's not how it works when you've done that area for the first time. I mean, just, that's just me. I'm just pretty positive that's not how it works. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's not what that situation looks like. Especially in that kind of scenario. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's just me. So we fast forward, we get Caleb back. He's still not communicating, still not telling her why he loves her or that he loves her or that he cares about her at all because he doesn't communicate. He doesn't speak. He hasn't spoken since he was a child and he got locked in a car and his mom went on a bender for four days and he screamed until he just stopped talking and he just refused to talk to anybody. Can we please, why in the fuck, why? Absolutely why did we decide to put her with the hero who refuses to speak when her parents refuse to speak to her. 
why would we do that? What logic does it have to have a our heroine go through all these years of, of abuse, of being ignored and not spoken to, to then go and put her with a hero who doesn't speak? does not communicate, will not communicate with her, will not tell her how he feels. But then, magically, she leaves him, right? She writes him a note, I gotta go, you have to learn how to like, deal with your feelings, you gotta learn how to communicate with me, whatever. And he comes to her after not speaking for 18 years. He was four, he was 22, 24, whatever. He was a long time. So we're going this extensive amount of time not speaking at all, right? He's obviously hearing the people around him speak, but never speaking. And he comes back to her after a month of her being gone and he's able to speak to her no problem. Now, I know that she said that he practiced speaking for a month by reading out loud, but I had a lot of issues with the fact that he was just so, e he, he, he spoke so easily. That just didn't seem realistic that he was able to communicate with her so quickly and so easily, like there was no problems with him speaking. It just, it just didn't add up. It did not. I'm just really sure it was gonna take more time for him to be able to communicate that easily after not speaking for that long. It just didn't add up. I, I might be wrong, but I don't understand how we were able to communicate so quickly and so easily. I just, it sat with me wrong. I didn't love it. It was, it was a no for me. So in conclusion, uh, this book was garbage. It made me want to jump out of a window and I'm questioning why I would ever want to pick up another Penelope Douglas book ever. So um, I'm going to remain hopeful. I will probably give her another chance, but this one was a miss and I don't understand why everyone loves it. I don't understand because I had so many issues and I feel like I'm barely touching the surface of the issues that I had with it. I just could not get behind any of it. So if you are still here and uh, you agree with me at all, give me the emoji with like that breathes smoke out of its nose, like the really angry one. Leave me that emoji down in the comments. Uh, and I'll chat with you on my next video. Bye everyone.